Hello and welcome to Kobe's Classroom, the visual guide for the fight Anabasios, the 12th Circle Savage, Phase 1. This will be our class setup for this guide. The macro can be found in the video description. The main tank will pull the boss and the fight begins. Athena will begin to cast on the soul. This is a heavy hitting raid wide AoE, so heal and shield as necessary. Next, Athena will begin to cast Paradema 1. This is cast multiple times throughout the fight for different mechanics. This first instance will spawn four yellow eggs. These eggs will move to either the north or the south, with two on the west edge and two on the east. At this point, Athena will begin to cast Trinity of Souls. Three of her wings will begin to glow, either from top to bottom or bottom to top. Athena will cleave the half of the arena corresponding to the side that the glowing wing was on. If her wing starts glowing from bottom to top, she is going to rotate 180 degrees after each cleave. To read this, if two wings on the same side glow one after another, we will have to swap for a maximum of one swap. This first cast is always bottom to top. We move to the side of the arena, opposite her first wing. To avoid the first cleave and pay attention to where the other wings are. In this case, the second wing is on the same side as the first, so we have to swap after the first cleave. At the same time, the first eggs hatch and spawn two angel adds. These adds will shoot two lasers at the two closest players. We have the supports take this first set of lasers, the DPS will then swap and take the second set of lasers. The second eggs hatch, the third wing begins to glow, and the Trinity of Souls cast finishes. Now everything will resolve. The first lasers and cleave goes off. We swap sides to dodge the cleave, and the DPS move to bait the second lasers. Finally, the third cleave and second lasers go off, and the mechanic is over. Next, Athena will begin to cast Paradema again, this time spawning four blue eggs and two red eggs. The blue eggs move to the sides, and the red eggs move to the north. Athena begins casting Engravement of Souls. At the end of this cast, several debuffs and tethers will be given out. Two supports and two DPS players will be given a Dark Tower and a Light Tower debuff. At the end of this cast, a tower will drop on them that needs to be soaked by a player of the opposite polarity, i.e. a Light player must soak a Dark Tower and vice versa. The other four players will be tethered to the four blue adds, with either a Light Tether or a Dark Tether. When these tethers resolve, the player will be hit by a laser, giving them a polarity debuff of the same colour as their tether. We have the tether players stretched directly across, opposite their ad, standing in line with the way marks is fine. Next, the tower players must move to be next to a player with the opposite colour tether to their tower debuff, standing on the number way marks. We have the DPS take priority counterclockwise, and the supports taking priority of the clockwise positions. The tethers will resolve, and the tether debuff and the tether players will gain the associated polarity debuff. The towers will resolve and drop on the tower players. The tether players then stand in the tower next to them to soak it. At this point, you should notice the ads at the north. These ads are going to shoot a line AoE. So just look where they are and move to avoid it. The towers resolve and the north adds shoot the line. The mechanic is over. We have another on the soul. Just heal and mitigate through it. Next we have a tank buster, Glorcopus. We have the off tank provoke and use their invuln to take both hits. Next, Athena will begin Super Chain Theory 1. There are two important chain types, a pink plus that we have to resolve in pair stacks, and an orange spiky orb that we must resolve in a spread position. 
you can see the parent spreads here. These are done boss relative. There are two additional chain types, a blue donut and a green AoE. These will just do their respective AoE upon colliding with their linked orb. There are several debuffs given out. We've already seen the red and white towers, as well as red and white polarity debuffs. The three new debuffs are a white laser, a red laser, and four spread debuffs. As you may have guessed, the players with the dark debuffs will need to be hit by a white laser, and the player with the white debuffs will need to be hit by a red laser. Later on, the players with the lasers will soak the dropped towers. The spread debuffs simply have to spread at the end as they will be hit by a medium-sized point-blank AoE. I will only be showing the important shapes and orbs. There will be other green orbs around just to stop you moving in the wrong direction. Let's begin. The first orb spawns, and in this case it's a donut and a spread. Athena begins casting Engravement of Souls, and we move to the donut in our boss relative spread position. The engravement cast is finished, and debuffs are given out. We can work out where we're going next. It will always be a donut. Since we will be moving clockwise to the second orb, we will continue moving clockwise to the third orb as well. The shapes collide, and the donut and spreads go off. Next we move to the donut, and get ready to be hit by the lasers. To do this, we have the red players go left, the white players go right, and the lasers on the opposite side. To remember this, I always just repeat red, left, white, right, lasers opposite in my head. The lasers go off, and polarity debuffs are swapped and gained appropriately. We then continue to the third orb. This will always be a donut and AoE, one after the other. In this case, the donut is closer, so it will be going off first. The donut goes off, then the AoE goes off. The spread debuff players can spread. We have the tower players move to the letter waymark on the same side they were on for the second orb. The laser players just move in towards the boss. The towers get dropped, the tower players step out, and the laser players step in, soaking the tower on the same side they were on for the second orb. The towers get soaked, and the spread debuffs resolve. Super Chain 1 has finished. At this point, Athena begins another trinity of souls. In this case, the wings are glowing from top to bottom, so she won't flip. The wings glow, the clays go off, and we dodge as necessary. Next, we have a party stack and a tank buster, baited on the closest and furthest player. Which player gets what depends on the cast name. If the name starts with A, the main tank will move to A, and just kitchen sink the tank buster using their mitigation. The party will move to the middle. If the name starts with P, the party moves to C, and the main tank will move to the middle. A for tank to A, E for party to C. There's another on the soul after. Your party mitigation should be timed to catch both. Athena begins the third cast of Paradema. This spawns four blue eggs and two yellow eggs. You should remember these from the first two Paradema's. She then begins to cast, you guessed it, another engravement of souls. This will again give various debuffs and tethers. The eggs fly off to their positions and Athena begins to tether four platforms in a zigzag pattern. These platforms are going to drop. The eggs hatch and the debuffs and tethers are given out. There will be two tower debuffs, either, either dark or light, and two new debuffs, a plus and a cross. These will simply drop a plus or a cross AoE on the player with it when it resolves. All these debuffs are given to the support players. All the DPS players will get tethered to the blue adds. Four towers will spawn, one on each platform that isn't going to drop. To resolve this mechanic, we need one support on each platform, and two DPS on each of the middle two platforms. To get this, we have the support with the plus debuff moved to the very north platform, 
and the support with the cross debuff moved to the very south platform. The remaining two supports, the ones with the towers, will fill the middle two platforms from west to east with the main tank, off tank, H1, H2, priority. Check who has the other tower and move appropriately. The supports can move to soak the tower on their platform. Next, the DPS must move to resolve their tethers. The tethers will be stretched to the middle platform opposite their tethered ad. One DPS should have their tethers stretched straight, the other DPS will be crossed. The crossed tether can simply stand on the waymark. The straight tether has to take one step in from the D or B waymark towards the middle of their platform to avoid getting hit by the other straight tether's laser. The support in the tower should adjust a bit to make sure they don't get hit by the straight tether's laser. The platforms drop, the lasers go off, and the respective debuffs are applied. Next we'll resolve the plus and cross debuffs. The player with the plus debuff will move to the far corner, northwest or northeast, and drop their plus AoE there. The cross debuff will drop their cross AoE at the south, next to the middle line of the arena. Next, the tower players must be ready to drop their towers. One tower must be dropped in the middle of the arena, the other will be dropped on their platform. This is how we'll work it out. If the DPS on your platform have the same colour tether as your tower debuff, you need to place your tower in the middle. If the DPS on your platform have the opposite colour tether to your tower debuff, you will be dropping your tower on your platform. The supports move ready to drop the towers. The plus and cross debuffs resolve. There are two additional adds that haven't been mentioned yet. The yellow adds that shoot lasers at the two closest players. The supports on the north and south platforms will be soaking one laser each. The other two lasers will be soaked by the two DPS players not soaking a tower. To resolve this, we have the DPS with the same colour tether or debuff as the tower players move to the cardinal waymarks on their platform. The lasers will be baited and the towers will drop. The DPS that started on the D or B waymark will always soak the tower in the middle. The other DPS will soak the tower on their platform. This is followed up by an on the soul that will restore the platforms and the mechanic is over. We get another Glorcopus, the main tank just inbounds both hits of this. Athena casts ultimate blade with no cast bar. Yell and mitigate through this. We then move on to the limit cut of this fight. The limit cut begins. Athena disappears, the arena is shrunk into a hexagon shape, and every player is given a number from 1 to 8. This number is the order in which Athena will dash to the player. Athena will reappear and we get ready to move to our boss relative position based on our number. 1 and 3 will start opposite Athena, 2 and 4 will start next to her, 5 and 7 will start to the left of her, closer to the middle, 6 and 8 will start to the right of her on the wall. It's important to note that the damage Athe Athena does when she charges must be soaked by two people and is based on the distance travelled. Throughout the encounter, 8 adds will spawn in the middle and will cast either a laser or a small cleave. Each player must be hit by one laser. Like the other add lasers, these ones are baited on the closest players. The order in which the lasers are taken are 5-7, then 6-8, then 1-3, then 2-4. The order in which the laser adds come out is somewhat random, so you must wait your turn and be ready to move in to bait on your turn. Athena will dash across, hitting the one player. The first add does its attack. In this case, it's a purple cleave. Athena leaves a puddle. The one three players move clockwise to get out of it. The two four players move opposite the puddle to take the second Athena hit. You can see the second ad has spawned. This one is yellow, so it will be a laser. Athena charges and the lasers come out. 
the puddle is dropped, and the two four players rotate clockwise. Five and seven move back to the wall as they have baited their lasers. The six eight players need to move in to bait their lasers. The ad appears. It's another laser ad. Athena dashes across to the three player, and the lasers go off. The puddle is dropped, and 5-7 can move to be next to the puddle. 1-3 rotate all the way clockwise and move in, ready to bait the next laser. Athena dashes to the 4 player, drops the puddle. 6-8 will move next to the puddle, and 2-4 will rotate clockwise, waiting their turn to bait the laser. This continues, Athena dashing to the next player, players rotating clockwise, and baiting the ad lasers until the mechanic is over. One three finally get hit by the ad laser, they move out, and two four move in to bait the next ad. Athena dashes for the final time, and the limit cut is over. Afterwards, all players will move north up to A, as Athena is going to cut the middle four platforms. She casts Theo's Ultima, which is a hard-hitting raid-wide, heal and mitigate through this. It will also restore the fallen platforms. Athena begins casting Super Chain 2A, the second last mechanic in the fight. The cast finishes, and several chains and orbs appear. Again, I'm only showing the important ones here. This mechanic takes place vertically along the middle line. The first thing to notice is where the short and long chains are. The short will always be a pink pair marker, the long will either be a pair or a spread marker. In this case, it's a spread. We move to the short chain in our pair position, and she begins casting Trinity of Souls. Take care to remember when you have to swap sides. In this case, we'll be swapping after the second cleave. The chains move, and the first cleave and pairs go off. This mechanic is fast, so I would recommend using Sprint here. We then need to move into the middle to avoid the donut. The second cleave and the donut go off. We swap sides to avoid the third cleave and move out of the middle to avoid the green AoE. The third cleave resolves, and we can move into our spread position. Spreads go off, and Super Chain 2A is over. It's fast, but if you understand the process, you'll nail it. I always check the direction I'm going, then check when I'm swapping, then check what the chain shape is. Afterwards, we get hit with another P or A attack. This one is P, so the tank goes into the middle. Since the party is already out, we can just stay at A. This is your second pot window. You should hold your 2 minute cooldowns for this point, and get a big burst with 2 minutes, 1 minutes, and pot. Athena begins to cast Super Chain 2B. This is the final mechanic of the fight, and easier than the last one in my opinion. The first orb spawns will always be going to a donut that is in the north or the south. Athena casts a Paradema, and spawns the two red adds from Paradema 2. The second chain position will be visible. It will always be either a pair stack or a spread, and always to your left or right. Athena begins to cast Parthenos. This is the line AoE that knocks back from normal mode. Donut goes off, and we move to the second chain, avoiding the Parthenos. You can use this time to check for the third set of chains. This will always be a green AoE and a spread. The Parthenos goes off, and we get into our pair or spread position. At this point, we have to be ready to dodge the north adds will either be moving out to the edge, or in towards the middle, depending on where they spawn. In this case, we're moving in. The pairs go off, then we move in to avoid the ads. Then we move out to our out and spread position. Athena will begin tethering all the platforms except one. The untethered platform will always be one of the four surrounding the final orb. The out and spread go off, then we move to the untethered platform, and the fight is pretty much over. We get two more on the souls, 
and then we hit Enrage. If you manage to kill Athena and make it to Phase 2, congratulations. If not, you'll get it next time. Thank you all for watching. You can find me on Twitch or Twitter at BigKobeLove. You can subscribe if you want and leave a comment down below telling me what I should do next. There's a clear VOD in the description as well. See you in the next one. Peace.